very warm welcome to this webinar about hybrid bearings, also from my side. My name is Matthias Zauner. I am business engineer for hybrid bearings, and I'm based in the, the SK factory in Steyr in Austria. Uh, I really enjoy to do this presentation today about hybrid bearings, uh, what they are, the features, the benefits, and definitely why the role is getting more and more important. And clearly, this is very much driven by certain global mega trends which we all face. Um, we experience them in our daily life, um, we experience them in our professional life. They influence industry, and uh, certainly, they have direct and indirect influence on us, SKF, uh, as a company and also as a bearing manufacturer, of course. And clearly, we take up this challenge, we work with these mega trends, and we provide um, all potential solutions for it. The first I'd like to mention is uh, urbanization and population growth. Uh, we all know people tend to move to cities uh, away from the countryside, and this clearly increases the need for public transport. It clearly increases the need for air condition, um, but also it is necessary to increase productivity in general. Digitalization and automation, a very prominent example of one of those mega trends, industry for that zero, um, artificial intelligence, all these are words uh, very famous in the industry. And this is definitely a driver for um, services like condition monitoring, predictive maintenance, uh, but also for robotics bearings, for example, and uh, also indirectly data center cooling, for example, is uh, very important in driving bearing demands. Of course, environmental challenges, we all face um, the, the effect of global warming. There is bush fires in the south of Europe. There is floods in uh, Germany and uh, Central Europe and in other regions of the world. Um, we as SKF, we definitely take on this challenge um, to, to support the fight against environmental change about uh, against global warming. We support clean tech industries like renewable uh, energy. We fully commit to circular economy and definitely we develop uh, low friction solutions which support to increase the efficiency of your applications and your um, factories. One obvious mega trend which we experience meanwhile kind of on a daily basis is electrification and the trend to go for electric vehicles. Of course, what we see commonly, I would say, in the streets is electric vehicles, electric cars, but it is also important for commercial vehicles like buses, trucks, and even off-road vehicles like excavators or uh, mining trucks, for example. And the last mega trend, which not everybody might think is influencing uh, a bearing manufacturer. Um, but of course, also globalization has influence on us. It requires global product know-how. It requires uh, a proper footprint with our products. And of course, we also need to have this international mindset uh, to be able to fully support our customers around the globe. And those mega trends, have as a consequence certain technology trends and certain technology trends have again direct effect on rolling bearings and i have picked out a few examples and uh, which we have in the focus in today's webinar the first one is a, a trend ongoing since a few years or a couple of years is that the uh, um, the focus on variable speed drives on inverter driven electric motors. And the motivation is pretty clear, it is obvious. Energy consumption should be reduced, costs should be saved, and uh, of course, you want to better control um, your machines, you better want uh, to 
control or have the variability in your process. For example, you can drive your pump also in low speeds if needed, or you can go to higher speeds than the, the grid provided uh, frequency. It comes with a side effect. Um, VSD, so variable speed drives, they can have as a consequence harmful bearing currents. Bearing currents can lead to electrical erosion, which again uh, can have detrimental effects on bearing life and service life in general. The second trend um, is also pretty crystal clear. Solutions, machines, equipment should be maintenance free. Nobody wants to do any maintenance on, on, a, on a machine. Um, so we need reliability and robustness also of the bearings. Um, the motivation, maintenance should be reduced as much as possible, of course, but at least as important is to have no unplanned standstill. We, you don't want to have any interruption in your process. So hybrid bearings are, as, or let's say bearings in general, they need to have longer life. They need to have a better lubricant life to cope well with this trend. Another trend which is very much driven by uh, automotive and the railway industry, so for uh, traction motors, is to increase the power density of, uh, of machines. You want to save space and weight, uh, for example, to increase the mileage of your car, or you also want to simply increase the power output from a same sized machine. And for bearings, this means you either need to downsize and or increase the operating speeds of the machine. This can definitely lead to the effect that you go to the uh, edge of bearing performance or even beyond. And as soon as we talk about bearings, uh, we also talk about friction reduction. And friction reduction, again, will increase your machine efficiency, means you need less energy, you can save operational costs. But there is also maybe a need or a trend to reduce oil consumption, lubricating oil, um, because you just want to go away from any fossil fuels or fossil oils. And as a consequence for bearings, this means you use lower viscosity oils or you reduce lubricant volume or a combination of both. And in the end, this is very challenging um, for rolling bearings and their tribological conditions. Within SKF, we thought about this and we definitely have a solution which can basically cope with those technology trends and go beyond that even. <clears throat> It is hybrid bearings. They are a common technology for certain applications and industries already, but they are of course well on the way to become a general industry standard um, for, uh, for a lot of applications. But what is a hybrid bearing actually and why is it called hybrid? It is called hybrid because it combines two different materials in a rolling context. So we have bearing grade steel rings but we make use of ceramic silicon nitride rolling elements. So within SKF, we use silicon nitride as rolling element material because it has simply the best uh, suitable, suitability for rolling bearing applications. And we use different ball sizes from approximately one millimeter up to roughly 50 millimeter and cylindrical rollers with a size of uh, less than five millimeter in diameter up to almost 50 millimeter in diameter. It means uh, we offer a broad and wide uh, assortment of different bearing designs and variants. We produce all kind of ball bearings, so deep, deep groove ball bearings, angular contact ball bearings, and also others. And of course, we also produce and sell cylindrical roller bearings, and we have a dedicated catalog assortment 
for cylindrical roller bearings and deep groove bore bearings. And you can recognize it in, uh, in a brochure, in a catalog uh, or anywhere else if there is HC5 in the bearing suffix. So as soon as you see HC5 and SKF designation, which comes right after the slash, it is an hybrid bearing. Those catalog designations and bearings are 100% interchangeable with all steel bearings or in code bearings. Um, they follow the same designations, of course. And what we can do beyond is to, to offer customized solutions for specific applications and customer needs. So we have solutions with uh, specific materials, with integrated uh, seal sensors and uh, even gears or flanges. Um, so we can do almost anything you could say. And yeah, we're happy to do so. Hybrid bearings are not necessarily new to, to the bearing world, you can say, but compared to the age of conventional steel bearing, hybrid bearings are still very young. It all started with the aerospace industry in the, the 1960s to the 1980s, where the use of ceramic is pretty logic. Um, ceramic is a lightweight material which can cope with high temperatures, so it made ultimate sense to work uh, with ceramic materials in the aerospace industry. But at that time, it was not yet silicon nitride, which was used because this was industrialized and became usable in the 1980s. And since then, actually, the actual or uh, the hybrid bearing journey started. It began very early in the 1990s with machine tool spindle bearings, where it is again uh, logical to use hybrid bearings because of very high speeds so you again make use of the low weight characteristics of the hybrid bearings and the ceramics but it continued with other applications and there was especially then a trend since the late 1990s to use hybrid bearings in uh, electrical machines so it started in the late 1990s with electric motors it continued in the early 2000s with railway traction motors and uh, mid of the 2000s with wind turbine generator bearings. And basically we meanwhile serve all kind of electric machines with hybrid bearings. In 2012, we really were able to achieve a big milestone in, uh, in from a technological perspective. We have launched and offer a solution which can cope with pure media lubrication. So those um, applications are not uh, containing any lubricating oil. The bearings do not see any lubricating oil. They are purely lub lubricated by the media. And this is very challenging in terms of lubricant film thickness and separation of ring and rolling elements. But it works well since many years and uh, we have very successful field experience with those those bearings. And the last very big milestone is actually um, again an electrical machine. It is traction motors for the automotive application. So we sell and use uh, hybrid bearings in electric cars since a couple of years. Um, very successfully, it is a very uh, obvious choice and it is definitely one of the focus areas for us uh, also in the coming years. In general, we can say those applications which we see here on this slide, uh, so aerospace, machine tools, etc. They are still very much our focus, of course, uh, including general the fluid machinery, fluid industry like compressors, pumps, vacuum pumps, etc. There is more to come. There is even more applications which will use hybrid bearings and they are going to be the future, the coming industry standard. But let's take a look at what makes a uh, hybrid bearing different from a steel bearing. It is the rolling element. It is the rolling element material to be precise. Silicon nitride has a few spe specific properties with, which makes it so unique. For example, the compressive strength is 
about a third higher than the one of bearing steel, which makes it perfectly fit for uh, rolling bearing applications. The tensile strength on the other side is lower than the one of bearing steel, so it could maybe co uh, cause some, some doubts in your mind. But actually, tensile stresses is not uh, super relevant in rolling bearing applications, so this is not a drawback for hybrid bearings. Uh, it is not relevant, you can say. The Young's modulus is about a third higher than the one of steel, which allows to reduce friction in the rolling contact, which allows to increase the stiffness, which is definitely desired for certain application. And what is really uh, outstanding is its hardness. Silicon nitride is more than twice as hard as bearing steel, which really makes it uh, a perfect selection for demanding uh, application or lubrication conditions, we can say. So if there is contamination or very thin lubricant films, silicon nitride can uh, better cope with it than anything else, basically. It is an insulator, the resistivity is way higher uh, than the one of bearing steel, of course, which is a conductor. The density is significantly lower than the one of steel, which is uh, makes it suitable for very high operating speeds as well. Anti-coefficient of thermal elongation is also different than the one of bearing steel. It is significantly lower. And this is not a drawback or anything. It just needs to be considered, especially for low temperature applications. On the picture on the right, you can see different silicon nitride balls. They do have different color shades. And what I do want to highlight here is that Color is not a quality indicator. And you can be sure if you buy SKF hybrid bearings that they fulfill the highest quality standards and we only use the most suitable materials for rolling bearing applications. So those material properties uh, end up in product features and bearing features, which makes it a, such a unique product. It is an electrical insulator. It helps to reduce your weight of the bearing and the application. It offers superior tra tribological performance and high wear resistance, and it is suitable for very high speeds. So all in all, a solution which can help you to cope with the today's demanding conditions, and but also it helps to cope with maybe technology trends which did not even come up yet. So it is a future um, solution for the industry. We've already seen a similar slide about those technology trends and their effects on rolling bearings. Um, so variable speed drive, maintenance free power density and friction reduction. And we will now take a closer look at those technology trends trends and why you actually should consider hybrid bearings if you face one of those trends and challenges. Let's start with their electrical uh, properties. Let's start with the prevention of electrical erosion, which is a very common effect in variable speed driven electric motors. In traditional induction machines, which are grid driven by 50 or 60 hertz, you might experience bearing currents, but then it's mainly low frequency bearing currents, which, which are not too harmful and where the counteractions are pretty simple. Um, for example, using Insecord bearings is a standard solution for uh, induction motors, which are grid driven. But this situation changes a bit with uh, variable speed drivel motors. We see more and more high frequency bearing currents, and some of you may heard about EDM currents, discharge currents, and DVDT currents. Um, and those are definitely challenging for the bearing. They cause issues with current passage in the bearing which happens when there is electrical current passing from one bearing ring through the rolling element to the other bearing ring. And 
if this is the case and uh, this is the case in, in VSD driven motors, we experience electrical erosion. And what is electrical erosion? It is basically um, a transfer from um, one bearing ring through the rolling element to the other bearing ring, as shown on the slide before. But the issue is that we don't have a perfect conduction between rolling elements and rings. Um, means there is sometimes, or hopefully always, lubricant between the components, which is a non-insulating material. And if the voltage potential is big enough, um, it can happen that there is sparking happening between the two surfaces, which we can a bit see on the left, where the ball is oscillating and the washer is standing still. And if those sparks happen in the rolling contact, it is possible that um, material is torn out of the surfaces or uh, that the material is locally molten and remolten, changing material properties. And this is leading to electrical pits, electrical erosion. Electrical erosion is sometimes very easy to recognize uh, in extreme cases, at least, where you can see dull running paths on raceways and dull balls, for example. Uh, but of course, also roller bearings, by the way. If you look at those uh, rings which are subjected to electrical erosion with a microscope or with a scanning electron microscope, you can see micro craters and electrical pits uh, very easily. And in a very extreme case, you get this fluting appearance, you get the washboard pattern, but this is actually a secondary damage. And besides those visual effects, it also has performance consequences on the bearing. It changes the raceway surface properties and the material properties. It can tear out uh, material particles of the molten material, which break loose and contaminate your lubricant. And all this is reducing your bearing service life. And it can also cause increased vibrations. Basically, both you don't want to have it in your machine. Besides the effect on um, the bearing components, uh, like rings and balls, it also has an effect on the lubricant. When those sparks uh, break down the, the lubricant layer, you can get discolored running paths or blackened grease. This is how you recognize it. But as I said, it is breakdown, uh, breaking down the lubricant layer. It locally burns the lubricant, which leads to thermal degradation and it can also use up your additives in your grease or your oil. So again, it is as at least as important as the effect on the components, on the mechanical components. It is shortening your relubrication interval uh, or grease life. And in the end, it is shortening your bearing service life. If you use hybrid bearings with ceramic rolling elements, this cannot happen anymore. Ceramic material and uh, silicon nitride is an insulator and it is an insulator between the two rings in the range of uh, several millimeters. So even at very high frequency currents, there is no risk of electrical erosion if hybrid bearings are used. So if you have inverter driven machines with um, very demanding bearing currents, Hybrid bearings are the most reliable solution to avoid any issues of electrical erosion um, or early bearing failures due to it. The next technology trend I would like to discuss is the need to extend uh, maintenance intervals to reduce maintenance on machines and equipment. And hybrid bearings can help to do so by boosting the grease life. It is known that hybrid bearings have a superior grease life. And we know why. It has an improved lubricant supply to the rolling contact because of a couple of reasons. It has a better wettability of the oil uh, on the ceramic 
rolling elements than uh, in steel bearings. The contact ellipse is smaller, which makes it easier for the oil to uh, to move into the rolling contact. And it also has slightly increased uh, contact stresses, which is favorable for grease bleeding, for example. And besides the improved lubricant supply, it also has a positive effect on lubricant degradation because it is simply reduced. Hybrid bearings have a lower friction, uh, which cause lower local temperatures in the rolling contact. It is electrically insulating, so we don't have those sparks and the thermal degradation due to it anymore. And it is chemically very resistant. So there is uh, no oxidation on the surface of the balls, uh, which you would experience in a steel bearing, for example. So we say at SKF that the crease life is typically at least twice as long as uh, for equivalent steel bearings. And why do I say at least? Because we have done extensive crease life testing on our SKF RF plus crease life test rigs. And we certainly know how crease life behaves or how creases behave in hybrid bearings. So we have tested deep groove ball bearings and cylindrical roller bearings, and we have compared steel and hybrid bearings. We have uh, carried out tests in different loading regimes. We have carried out tests at different speeds and temperatures. And very important, we have also done those tests on different creases. And what has been observed is that the grease life with hybrid bearings is definitely uh, twice as long as the one of steel bearings, which we have experienced with grease A. But the improvement with hybrid bearings can go up to uh, way higher factors, like uh, we have done one test where it went up to a factor of seven, and potentially it can go up even higher. And a very similar effect uh, could be identified on cylindrical roller bearings where we have tested basically similar or the same creases and the crease life performance or increase behaved a bit different um, but still it shows that that uh, the factor of two is definitely justified but it can go up to higher factors of four in those tests for example but it can go up even higher and besides the laboratory experience we've also gained extensive uh, field experience in the last 20 years and even more we have done numerous investigations of uh, bearings which were operated for a long time in the field for example we did investigate traction motor bearings after uh, more than 2 million kilometers in operation without any maintenance without any service on the bearings um, those two million kilometers represent the duration of 10 years. And still, we don't see real wear on the races of the bearings. There is some smoothening effects, but no wear as such. We don't see any sign of fatigue on the rings. And even the grease um, shows excellent condition still. It is uh, almost in virgin condition. And it just confirms that hybrid bearings are definitely the, the choice uh, of product if you want to ultimately boost the crease life, the robustness of your bearing, and it is an enabler for maintenance-free solutions. The next technology trend we should take a look at is uh, the trend to for increased power densities. Um, and the associated higher operating speeds. And there is a general trend for increased power density, especially driven by um, industries using traction motors, and here it is automotive and railway tra traction motors. In automotive, for example, you want to keep your electric motor as small as possible or as light as possible to increase your mileage and to save space uh, in the car. 
There is also another uh, option or, or trend that, of course, you can keep the motor at the same size as it was before, and you simply increase the power output. And taking a look at this simple equation, uh, you can see that the power is a function of torque and speed. And as the torque is very much uh, dependent on the size of the electrical machine, it is basically the speed you need to tune if you want to increase power density. And the speed inside the motor is, beside a few mechanical and thermal limits, also limited by bearings. And this is why you need to think about alternative, better bearing solutions for high speed applications for increased power density. Hybrid bearings have a speed capability which is up to 25% higher than the one of equivalent steel bearings. It is uh, given by the lower mass of the rolling elements. Lower mass means we have less internal forces like cage contact forces or centrifugal forces acting on the rings, but we have also improved kinematic behavior inside the bearing. So there is less contact angle change, for example, in hybrid bearings compared to steel bearings. The second effect which is uh, beneficial for the speed behavior is the reduced friction. Reduced friction means lower operating temperature, especially at high speeds. Lower operating temperature means increased service life, you know, increased crease life, for example, and it helps to increase your uh, overall machine efficiency. And another effect which is at least as important is uh, the increased stiffness of hybrid bearings. If you have an increased bearing stiffness, it allows you to better control uh, your machine accuracy, but it is also helping to um, reduce any risk of rotor dynamic issues or rotor dynamic problems. And if you want to go even further, we have uh, a new development, a new product offer. It is a new cage technology which allows the operation at even higher speeds than conventional hybrid bearings. So by making use of a new cage design and uh, making use of high performance polymer material, so peak, we can boost the limiting speed further 60% or even more. This new cage was specifically designed for high speed applications and to be robust for high speed applications. So we have optimized uh, cage design, the cage pocket, we have optimized chosen homogeneous material. Uh, we have used, and, uh, used very uh, modern uh, manufacturing processes and it also helps to reduce your cage mass, cage inertia, which allows higher speed operation. The new cage consists of two cage halves. The two cage halves are rigidly connected by a special jointing process, a special manufacturing process. And there was extensive development work done uh, on this uh, new cage and extensive simulation and tests. And it really uh, is a milestone uh, in terms of high speed applications. I already showed before that we choose peak material for those cages and it is very logic Peak is a polymer material, so it is light. It can accommodate high continuous temperatures, which is uh, very often present at high speed applications. It generally reduces also uh, the heat generation and lubricant con consumption inside the bearing. And in general, uh, or as a consequence, it enables um, a reliable solution and increases um, uh, service life at high speed applications without uh, any risk of sudden failure. What does it mean in numbers? So the speed capability is significantly higher than in conventional hybrid bearings. Um, we can go up by 60% compared to 
um, brass cage equipped hybrid bearings and even 100% higher than uh, polymer cages. Which is outstanding to be honest, uh, it is very, very impressive. And the second effect we have observed during our extensive testing period is that the vibration level and noise emission is significantly reduced um, compared to brass cages. This is getting more and more important also if we think about um, railway vehicles, you don't want to hear remote or anything if you sit in a train. Um, and the third effect, which is again very important for high speed applications is that the heat development at those high speeds is significantly lower than in a equivalent hybrid bearing with a brass cage. And actually it even allows us to go higher in speed because temperature development is slower and, um, and uh, yeah, lower in general. So as we're all confronted with the challenge for increased power densities um, sooner or later, we all need to think about better or upgraded bearing solutions and hybrid bearings is definitely a solution uh, suitable for increased power densities. And the last technology trend I would like to highlight today is a very obvious one. It is a friction reduction. It is important to increase machine efficiency to reduce energy consumption, which is very important today. And as soon as we talk about friction, we also need to talk about bearing friction. Bearing friction within us uh, is defined by a different um, contributing torques, friction torques. Within a bearing, we see rolling friction torque um, in the rolling contact, for example, but we also see sliding friction um, in a flange contact in a cylindrical roller bearing, for example. And there is also other friction torques which we don't see directly in the bearing um, but for example in lubricant which is drag losses in a lubricant or frictional losses um, by attached seals. What is directly influenced by hybrid bearings and by the ceramic rolling elements is the rolling friction torque and the sliding torque. Rolling losses are smaller in hybrid bearings because of the smaller contact ellipse, which is um, caused by a higher Young's modulus. And the sliding friction torque is reduced because of better surface quality of ceramic rolling elements. And let's see how, how the pure effect of the ceramic rolling element um, is. So we have done internal tests, friction measurements on four pin contact ball bearings, which are purely axial loaded and uh, subjected to oil air lubrication. And what we have seen is that the friction torque is in the range of 5% or 5 to 8% lower than with steel bearings. And of course it is, does not sound too much, but um, it gets significant, especially at high speeds. But if you really want to reduce friction in your application, it is not only the bearing, which has a very limited friction reduction potential, to be honest. But what you can do is to optimize your application and your machine. You can reduce base oil viscosities, you can go down in oil volumes, and you can even think about downsizing of the bearings. And this all leads to a friction reduction potential of up to 50% and this is definitely significant and hybrid bearings can support to achieve this friction reduction potential. We say consider both approaches if you really want to have a low friction machine. And again we carried out tests. We did a lot of friction torque measurements uh, on different lubrication conditions. Here you can see the solid lines which uh, represent the high viscosity oil and the dotted lines which represent uh, low viscosity oils and the different colors uh, indicate different oil volumes. 
So if you change your oil volumes or reduce your oil volumes, you can already substantially reduce the friction inside uh, your bearing arrangement. And you can even give it a further boost if you optimize the viscosity. And it comes with a side effect, um, which maybe is not really beneficial for steel bearings. If you go down in viscosity and oil volume, you reduce the lubricant film thickness. You maybe go from a full uh, film lubrication to a mixed lubrication regime or even down to a boundary lubrication machine. This is not desired for all steel bearings as it really can uh, lead to surface fatigue issues. So you don't want to have this condition in a steel bearing. But hybrid bearings can cope with those conditions. They are uh, a solution which can cope with those lubrication conditions because they have a lower boundary fr friction coefficient and a more favorable surface topography of the ceramic rolling elements. Within our SKF uh, research team, we have conducted a lot of different tests for different lubrication conditions, and we have also carried out tests with cylindrical roller thrust bearings and very poor lubrication conditions, so very thin lubricant films. And what is very obvious and what is can be seen immediately is that the all steel contact really suffers from uh, those poor lubrication conditions. Uh, there is significant wear visible and you can also see those micro pits on the ring surfaces in an all steel contact. While the hybrid contact, it actually looks very good still. There is no sign of micro pitting, no sign of early uh, failure due to low lubrication film thickness. And this makes it the perfect choice if you want to really reduce friction, go down in lubricant viscosity, go down in oil volumes and uh, select hybrid bearings in your machine. And we don't only have done tests, we don't only have uh, PowerPoint slides about it. We have developed a, a bearing life model, which is really capable to show the benefits of hybrid bearings. Common life theories like the basic rating life or the SKF rating life, uh, which are based on ISO 281, and even the advanced fatigue calculations, uh, integrated stress, stress calculation methods are not really capable to reflect and precisely uh, reflect uh, the benefits of hybrid bearings. The SKF generalized bearing life model, a new life model is an evolution of the, those life models, which can definitely reflect the reality in a better way than any previous life calculation method. And it is not only a new theoretical life model, but it is actually verified by, uh, or fully verified and validated. And if you're interested and I hope you're interested in this new life mo model which is also available on uh, skf.com and Simprook Week. You should listen to another uh, SKF Stronger webinar which was held end of last year Then you can learn a lot more and uh, gain a lot more insights into this new SKF life calculation method. So now I'm at the end of the presentation I'm very happy that I had the chance to present hybrid bearings to you. Historically, hybrid bearings have very often been seen as a problem solver, but today they are really more and more seen as an enabler for uh, certain technology trends. Yeah, it, it really allows to reduce friction. It, it really allows to fine tune your machines. And it is pretty sure this will be the future, the coming industry standard for many, many more industries than what it is already now. So thank you very much for listening in.